Can you stay alive for nine days in the scorching heat of the sun without drinking water? It's impossible, right? But there was an Olympic gold medalist named Mauro Prosperi who had to face the situation in the Sahara Desert. It was 1994 and a marathon was about to take place. Mauro had participated in order to try something new, but he didn't expect something so tragic to happen. What was it and how did it happen? In this video, I will let you know everything you need to know about this historic incident. Let's get right into it. Welcome to another episode of the Untold Tales of Africa. So it all started in Morocco, when the Marathon de Sables was going on. A policeman named Mauro Pesperi from Italy was a gold medalist in the Olympics and gave himself a huge challenge by participating in this six-day marathon. Before the race, he did quite careful preparations and everything was going well until the fourth day. This day was so tough because the temperature had reached 46 degrees Celsius and suddenly, a sandstorm came and obscured Prosperi's vision. Prosperi was afraid of falling behind and in order to maintain his lead, he didn't stop and ran into the sandstorm continuously. Unfortunately, the sandstorm didn't stop for 8 hours straight and once it did, at that moment, Prosperi realized that he was lost. He was then so tired that he slept overnight into the next morning and ran 4 hours hoping to see other runners again, but all in vain. He even climbed to the top of sand dunes to look for the course's mark but didn't succeed in finding it. And now it's almost 24 hours since he didn't refill his water bottle and only a little bit of water was left in it. Since it was getting so difficult for him to survive in this terrifying situation without any help and dying of thirst, he decided to urinate in a spare bottle and drink it to quench his thirst. At this time, he waited for the race helicopter to come rescue him and maintain the same position for hours and hours. At the time of sunset, he finally noticed the helicopter coming towards him. So in order to give a signal for his position to the helicopter, he fired a flare gun that he had in his backpack from the beginning of the race. But unfortunately, this flare was so small and so faint that the helicopter didn't notice it at all. As a result, the rescue helicopter flew away and Prosperi never got another chance to see the helicopter again. An interesting fact is that ever since this incident took place, runners are equipped with larger flares so that such situations can be avoided. After facing immense disappointment and intense hopelessness, Prosperi fell asleep again. He woke up on day 2 and the temperature was around 40 degrees Celsius and he was so scared that he was going to get a heat stroke. He took out his compass but all he could see was sand everywhere. Without knowing whether the direction was right or not, he started walking to find water and after several hours, he found a native shrine for Muslims. It was abandoned for a long time but Prosperi utilized it as a shelter for the next two days. He had a small supply of food in his backpack so he took it out and cooked it with his urine on the portable burner that he had. He dealt with dehydration by licking the dew on stones and as I already mentioned before, drinking his own urine. Afterwards, he climbed to the top of the shrine and planted an Italian flag on it which he was carrying in his backpack hoping that somebody might see it and rescue him. But when he climbed up, he saw a colony of bats there. He killed them and drank their blood in order to quench his thirst. On day 4 of being lost, he found something surprising, an airplane. It was flying overhead and he had to give a signal of his presence. Prosperi drew an SOS sign in the sand and immediately burnt his backpack. The moment he burnt his backpack, another sandstorm came and lasted about 12 hours this time. Therefore. The plane neither saw him nor any of his signals. Now, Prosperi was completely hopeless and he had failed for the second time and there were minimal supplies left. He was assured that he was going to die really soon and his death would be extremely torturous. Now he wasn't even walking anymore and thinking that he would die at any point where nobody could ever find his dead body. His wife's life would truly become miserable. In Italy at that time, if somebody goes missing and the dead body can be found, the family has to wait for a decade for that person to be declared as dead and can't access the pension for the years that they are missing. Due to all of these agonizing thoughts, he decided to commit suicide because he had an idea that it would be easier to find his body in the shrine. In a state of sadness, he wrote a farewell note and finally slashed his wrist with the pocket knife that he had. He thought that he would die, but miraculously, he woke up again on the fifth day. This happened because he was dehydrated and the incisions that he made were too tiny. Therefore, blood clots were formed and minimal blood flowed out of his body. This gave him a ray of hope and he decided to survive again. He moved to the mountains not knowing where they would lead him. He used to walk in the morning and the evening when the temperatures were much cooler. He would also keep himself secured from the high temperatures with the help of shades from cliffs and dunes during the daytime. After a long journey, to his amazement, he discovered an oasis. The unfortunate thing was that since his throat was extremely dry over the last few days, it wasn't easy for him to drink the water in one go. So he simply laid down beside the water and took very little sips. On day 8, 
he slept soundly. He again walked towards the mountains on the next day and found goat footprints first and human footprints afterwards. Luckily, after following in the footsteps, he met a girl and with her help reached a tent of nomads. The local military police picked him up from there and admitted him to the hospital. And this was the moment that he realized that he wasn't even in Morocco anymore. He was lost in Algeria. He had lost 33 pounds of his weight and needed blood for treatment. Even after going back to his family in Italy, his organs remained damaged and the healing process took over two years. An astonishing fact is that Prosperi participated in the marathon several times again and got 13th position in 2001. What a fascinating display of human suffering and determination. So how do you feel about this incident? What do you make of Mauro Prosperi's resilience? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. That's it for today's video. I really hope you liked it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss another upcoming video. My name is Asher and I'll see you in the next one.